Hello everyone and welcome back to Factory Town, where in the last episode we fleshed out Ember Point. Now, uh, we currently have quite a lot of uh, luxury items, or well, actually they've got food, and, and a few, uh, some medicine, I, luxury as far as our towns go at the moment, but still they have uh, a lot of uh, modern technology here, uh, some of which they are exporting to other towns. Now, we have just unlocked mine shafts and supply pickaxes, this will indeed give us the ability now to uh, basically have minerals as renewable resources. But as I mentioned in the end of the last episode, today we want to focus on getting medicine to the apothecary. Not just the, the odd, uh, the odd uh, healing bandage that we are actually producing in a reasonable amount. We want to start producing remedy, fish oil, so on and so forth. Uh, ointment, for example. Now let's just refresh our memory on exactly what we're going to need. Fish oil, you just need fish and some red coins. For ointment, you need fish oil and you need herbs. And for antidote, you need remedy. Now, I did mention uh, in the the previous uh, previous uh, episode that to make the antidote we would need health potions. That is not correct. That is, in fact, quite incorrect on my part. Uh, to make the the antidote, we need remedy, which itself is made from herbs, water, and some fuel. That gives you some remedy, and then you can add all of this together, and you get an antidote for twelve. Uh, blue coins there. It's uh, not bad, all things considered. Uh, though you do need to use two of them, so it's already down to uh, just six coins of value. Then you've got to take out the fish oil, which is two coins of value. So realistically, you're only making four, uh, four coins of value there. Whereas, alternatively, you can just take two fish oil and four herbs and make an ointment, which will produce uh, a little bit more. This this requires quite a lot of different steps to go into it, unfortunately, but, uh, well, you know, it may be worth it in the end. Either way, let's go ahead and start our work. Now, we're already producing herbs at plenty, and that's uh, being moved down to our workshop. Now, we could just tap into some of that resource, and we're going to want to do that. Now, first step is to clear up a little bit of an area for our fishing. We'll just uh, carve away the, the forest there just to make a bit more of a natural looking curve there. Next step, we are going to want to prepare an area for our fishery. And we'll go ahead and do something like this, I think. We'll bring that out like so. And then we'll also add in a little bit of support there so it looks reasonable. Next step, we are going to want the fishery itself. So let's go ahead and grab you. And we should be able to uh, make this work quite comfortably if we pop it up there, for example. Then we could go ahead and have, well, you know what? I feel the fishery would do well with just a little, little regular wooden path moving nearby. All right, let's select a recipe. We want fish. Now that is going to cause uh, cost us red coins, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit of decor as well. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll content ourselves with just a lamp for now. Now that should be bringing in a decent amount of fish. It brings us in one fish every four seconds. Well, that's not actually uh, nearly fast enough. I think we need that one to be quite a lot faster. And the workers here massively increase the speed that we're going to be able to uh, harvest that. So let's go ahead and have three workers working this place. Next up, we're going to need a kitchen. Now the kitchen is going to require some fuel. Uh, that is a given. There we are. We'll get a little road there. In fact, we're going to have a double road because then that lines up with the door a little bit better. Now, the first thing we're going to want the kitchen to do is to prepare uh, fish into fish oil. Uh, we are, if we go for the antidote, then we're going to need the fish oil and the remedy and sugar, which is quite a lot. Alternatively, we could just go for the ointment, which is a much simpler one for us to build towards. Initially, it's going to require two fish oils and uh, medicine herb. Now that does take uh, take some time to set up, unfortunately, because the the we're gonna have to have two operations at six seconds each. But we can add a steam booster, and so we will, of course, add one. Now uh, for the ointment, we just need herbs, uh, fish, and that's pretty much it, because the fish oil goes in to make the ointment itself. So let's go ahead and set up a little uh, conveyor line there. 
pause it for a moment just so that we can get the grabber in place. Set that up to bring along the fish. There we go. And that should all be great. We'll start producing the fish oil now. Uh, second step is, of course, to bring along the herbs. Now, at this point, we could go ahead and use a silo to crisscross these. And I'm thinking that may well be a worthwhile option for us to take. Though it will mean that this wagon isn't easily going to be able to deliver the uh, necessary uh, fertilizer to this silo. But we can actually use silos in a way to facilitate that. Let's uh, get rid of this tile, for example, over here. And we'll use the pipette tool to grab another silo. There we go. And from now on, I would like you to bring the fertilizer down to this silo. There we are. I'll set this one up for fertilizer. There we are. And then this one can simply move that fertilizer along. And I think that should be fine. There we go. Just have these there. And then we'll just build across. And that should all be perfect for us. Uh, we will grab... I guess we could shoot it if we really wanted to, but I think this should be fine for now. Let's just set that up for fertilizer. There we go. Marvellous. So that is going to uh, expedite the process of moving the the who, uh, the fertilizer along. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why are you doing that? Well, it happens that by doing this, we now have uh, freed up a space for us to put in another silo. This silo, of course, will be for herbs. Let's go ahead and set that one up now. And we are going to need a grabber as well. There we go. This will be, of course, set just to, to pull herbs out, but we are also now able to have a conveyor pulling the herbs down in this direction as well. And there we go. Perfect. Right, there we are. Now, we can't balance it in quite the same way as we could if we just had a uh, straight up balancer on this side, but this should be good enough I should imagine. And with that, we should start seeing now the herbs building up and the ointment being made. Absolutely perfect. Now, with that being done, I think uh, we could move ointment out, either via a pipe straight out of the kitchen, or we could store the ointment in a silo. And I kind of feel like I want to put the ointment in a silo. Uh, that way we could actually move it elsewhere, but uh, for the time being we'll just have the silo nice and easily accessible down here. There we go. Pop something in like that and then grab. Well, we are very much going to have to specify what we're grabbing here because we don't want to pull out the fish oil. And there's every possibility of us doing that actually. So let's just set that up properly. There we go. Make sure nothing's going to jam. And there we are. Ointment is now going into the silo. So that gives us a little bit of a buffer. I feel that is going to be very, very useful for us. Now, are we going to move the fluid pipes underground? I think probably yes. So let's go ahead, grab the fluid pipe and switch to underground view. Now we want to deliver the ointment straight down there. Now I'm hoping that this is in fact going to work. Uh, there's, there's a possibility that it might not. And uh, I would feel a little bit dumb if that were the case. There we are. Fluid pipe connector output. Let's uh, go ahead and select this. Can I tell it what to bring? Uh, let me see if I can't. I kind of selected. There we are. Item filter. Uh, we want... Uh, well, it's any fluid currently. Uh, maybe I'm going to need to pull that out specifically, though. Uh, I may need to make sure that that is being yoinked out properly. Uh, let's go back into this mode and just make sure that we have got the correct connector there. Let's go ahead and grab the fluid pipe connector, remove that, pop that down. No. Oh, right, it's currently set to in out, but we want very much output. There we are. And I guess we can specify ointment. Oh, ointment is not one of the valid options. Ah, well that throws a spanner in the works now, doesn't it? Scallywax. Yeah, ointment is one of the few things that we can't actually move out. All right, well, uh, in that case, that uh, is a bit of an oversight on my part. Alas, we're gonna have to get rid of all of that ointment in there. I suppose we could, for the time being, just make one, uh, one little wagon to move all that of that over. We may have a valid path. It's probably going to be a really long 
roundabout. Oh, you know what though? I'm being silly about this. Let me let me uh, show you a little trick. If we want to just quickly empty that out, just do that. Win. There we go. That'll be uh, nice and simple, and we'll get all of that ointment out of there. Okay, so we do have to absolutely use that ointment. Uh, right. Okay. Well, given that, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop the production of ointment completely. I guess we could go for remedy, uh, since that is something we could we could move. But uh, honestly, I kind of fancy going for the uh, the antidote ultimately. So let's set up antidote there. That does mean that we're going to have to expand this out rather rather extensively, unfortunately. But uh, it's one of those things. Uh, I am also going to need to move that ointment out of there too. I moved... Oh, where's my car going? Uh, sure. Okay, if you would like to move, I can make it a little bit faster for you. No. Come on. There we go. Right, I would like you to move the ointment out since uh, that we're not going to be selling now. Okay, so we're going to need sugar as well as fuel. All right, well, it's not too terribly bad. Uh, though, before we get too sidetracked, let's go ahead and hook this up to steam. I think we probably should. Uh, let's bring this all the way down here. We'll pop down a little steam connector there because naturally we want the steam connectors to hook up in the overworld there we go something like that and we can bring the pipes up as well let's bring up by that's uh, two will do and then across dunk there we go perfect now with that done i think we uh, should largely be okay we are going to need to hook up fluid uh, in the, the sense of water. So let's do that as well. So I'll bring that across and into the back. There we go. That's the next one taken care of. And now all that remains is fuel and indeed sugar. Now the fuel is going to be the easiest one of it all to do. We can just set up a little little uh, lumber yard here. Or we could even tap into the lumber over there. But that, to be honest, that will take a bit of a long roundabout route. Quite a, uh, quite a quite a snaking route from over there. I think it would probably be better to set up a dedicated uh, fuel supply back here instead. To that end, we are unfortunately going to clear out a little bit more room. Uh, something along those lines should do quite nicely. Let's go ahead and grab us a forester. There we are. Should be a nice and simple like that. Now, actually... How about we sh we shunt this back one more tile? That way, this forester will uh, line up in such a way that it won't be difficult for us to get the sugar into the kitchen. I think that's probably a, a worthwhile uh, endeavor there. There we go. Oops, that hasn't gone down correctly. For some reason, I find that the, the shoots sometimes don't line up the, the way one might expect. Uh, we'll just want wood, so that should be all fine for us there. There we go. And now we should already start seeing Remedy being made. Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. So with that done, uh, we are actually going to need uh, possibly a few more peeps. Mm. Let's go ahead and add one. Uh, it doesn't add much, I'm going to be honest. We'll add two to get that extra 50% there. But the final part to, to our, uh, our little outfit here will of course be the deliveries of sugar. And while we're waiting, we'll move the wagon over here as well. There we go. Nice and easy, empty out all of that ointment and uh, pretend that my initial mistake was never made. I think that would be wonderful. Right, so we are going to want the remedy, the fish oil and indeed the sugar. I guess we could just have the, uh, the remedy being made over here perhaps. And then the fish oil being made here in a separate kitchen. Uh, I'm not entirely down with that idea, though, I'll be honest. I think I would prefer to just have a simple little farm back here. Set up with some farm tiles at the back. There we go. Something something nice. Nice and simple there. Uh, we will, at this point, though, uh, allow ourselves to bring along a little bit more fertilizer. There we go. Uh, set this one up to supply both water and fertilizer, and I would like you to gather up some sugar. Uh, first, of course, we're going to have to plant the sugar, though. This is a rather expensive one. There we go. 
And we're also going to want to hook this up to water as well. Where do we want to hook this well up to? Mm. We could bring down and have a, a separate pump section down here. And I think that's probably going to look the best. And right now, it is the look of it that I'm going for. Uh, sure, we'll bring it down there. And build up a little connector. There we are. And I think we may well be nearing our goal. So bring this up by two, and then across, like so, and then in. Should be fine. There we are. Uh, it's a little bit tall, actually. Let's uh, bring that down just a tad. Let's uh, bring that down, and that one. There we are. And we'll just add in the fluid pipe connector specifically. There we go. That's, that's perfect. Right, okay, so with that, we should start seeing sugar flowing freely. Now, sugar can't be shooted. It does not roll down shoots, as one might expect from sugar. So we're going to have to deliver that one uh, quite explicitly there. There we go. And that should be everything we need. Sugar is on its way. The kitchen should start producing the antidote, which would be rather grand. And if we have a, a look here, we can see the fluid pipe connector right there. So we are going to, at this point, be happy enough to return that uh, that uh, wagon to the populace. Get, get those meeples back, back in their homes, awaiting further instruction. And we will set this up for the delivery of Antidote there, which hopefully, hopefully, is one of the ones that we can move. Yes, we can indeed move an Antidote. So we'll just want to set this up so that we can pull that out. Have we got any Antidote stored? We do indeed. So let's add in the final, final touch. We need a grabber, just to make sure we're pulling out the right thing. So there we are. Uh, where are we? There we go. Antidotes being delivered, and they should be immediately being piped along. Ah, glorious to see. Now, it is going to slow down a lot now, because we need a lot of different things to be made before all of this gets delivered. It's a shame, but uh, on the plus side, we are actually making a reasonable amount of blue coins, I must say. I'm fairly happy with that. But uh, one thing I'm not happy with is how little herbs we're producing. These are now having to be shared in quite a few places, so let's go ahead and add in an extra bunch of workers there. That will help out quite a lot. I would actually like to put even more workers in there if I get the opportunity to. But that seems to be the, uh, the limiting factor now is the production of herbs. Everything else uh, is okay. Mind you, we only need two per, so uh, it shouldn't shouldn't be so bad. Um, looking at this, we basically need four for each antidote we produce. And at the moment, yeah, ten seconds. It, it's a bit it's a bit nasty. We're massively overproducing sugar as a result, but overall, I think that should be okay. So we've now got our blue coins at long long last. Right, well, let's uh, go ahead and set up some advanced logistics. This is going to unlock the ability to use automation properly, uh, programmable automation. But while all of that is going on, we're also going to need to set up the production of some pickaxes. That's uh, going to be a new tool that we actually need quite a lot of uh, to, uh, in order to supply our minds in the future. So let's go back to our older, one of our older towns and uh, start preparing a pickaxe manufacturing uh, manufacturing run. Let's check what's going to be needed for that. Uh, to make a pickaxe, we simply need one iron plate and one reinforced plank. That's actually a very, very modest amount of resources. Quite, quite wonderful, in fact. We'll want probably two spots for this. Uh, we want a barn and we want a workshop. That being said, we don't strictly need to stockpile the pickaxes in any any uh, large scale way. Uh, we are going to want a dedicated workshop for this though. Uh, where do we want to set that up perhaps? Um, we could have something set up here, but carting all of the resources down there, that'll be a bit of a, a bit of a posh, I fancy. So we could instead have something set up here. Now that is going to necessitate removing some of these resources. Now that might be uh, making you panic a little bit because we haven't got very many and I suppose it should given that. However, we will eventually be setting up a mine down here. And in fact, it's probably a wise place to put a mine for the time being since uh, it would be able to benefit immediately 
from the presence of pickaxes. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, we want a workshop. We are going to want a little road heading in. And unfortunately, we're going to need to upgrade our population as well. But let's go ahead and set up the pickaxes first and foremost. Right. Well, we've got a couple of low-level houses around here that we can immediately upgrade without any further consideration. Uh, and uh, that will look quite nice. But we're also going to upgrade one of the houses right in the middle to a level 4 house. There we are. That has given us quite a few extra meeples to play with. Let's go ahead and set this up. We'll... Uh, We'll leave it at one for now, I guess. But we will be adding a steam booster. Now, do we have much in the way of steam over here? We do not have any steam down here. Well, that is that is a terrible oversight on our parts. Uh, we are producing a goodly amount of steam. Though that being said, maybe we could be producing it a little bit faster. Oh, we are lacking the water. We're not providing the water fast enough. So that is an interesting one. That is a very interesting one. Hmm. Yes, I see. We're, we're splitting it up a little bit here. Also providing a load of water down there. Uh, perhaps we could do with a dedicated water delivery to the steam generator. Might be worth our time since it clearly isn't getting the, the full amount of steam that it could use. Sure. Okay, let's, uh, let's make this happen for us then. With that in mind, we could have a steam generator just built up around here, perhaps, that is providing water directly into all of this. And it can hook up underground. Okay, I like that idea. Let's go ahead and uh, set up the steam pump, the water pump, rather. We'll set that up about here. There we go. Uh, I'm thinking, actually, we're going to move it a little bit further along. Just so this can branch off a little bit more. So, we can, so it's a bit more more distinct and obvious what's going on there. Otherwise, we might have issues with the uh, steam pipe connectors. Right, there we are. Let's uh, pop this down. I just want a steam pipe if I can. That will do. And this can come straight along. There we are. Perfect. Right, let's go ahead and build the fluid pipes underground. We can just connect this up down here. And I can flow in this direction. There we go. Well, actually, given that it is sending over here, not necessarily what we need. Perhaps what we should do instead is... Hmm. You know what? Let's branch this off and deliver some of the water underground. There we go. That'll work quite nicely, I think. This ensures that the steam generator is getting as much water as it can use. Now let's have a look at the steam overlay. Oh, that's looking significantly more healthy. I like it. Now with that in mind, we could branch off some of the steam down here and send it into this area, and I think we probably should. Uh, whether we set that up in this episode or not, I'm not entirely sure on that one. But we will bring down the steam at the very least, and we can have the steam... Uh, for the moment, just kind of exit back here. I'll set up the the connector just so that I can see what it is. But there we go. Plenty of steam heading its way down. Now, this may be a problem in that uh, it doesn't seem to want to go up unless it it's completely backed up. But it'll probably back up fairly quickly. So at that point, we should see the steam starting to head up again. There we go. And now once uh, some of the buildings down here start consuming steam, that might uh, change things up and I may have to address that problem in the future. But for the time being, it should be all right. So second step to our plan, we want to set up a mine. Now the mine, if we were to build it right next to the iron deposit, uh, the work, the workshop and uh, thus deliver the pickaxes directly into it that would be a help I'm not gonna lie uh, but let's let's set it off to the side and we can we can bring the pickaxes via a delivery system instead uh, we will go ahead and build our mine around somewhere around here I think should be okay now I'm going to demonstrate how the the um, Delivery of pickaxes is going to affect this. Let's pop that down there as well. In fact, we're going to have a uh, little 
cobble road, just leading over to the road. There we go. We're going to want the pickaxes delivered like so. Let's set this up correctly. Pickaxes, there we go. And of course, we are going to want a grabber as well. There we go. Now this should keep the mine well stocked. Uh, now, ultimately, I am going to want to take pickaxes out of this silo and deliver elsewhere. For now, that, this should be enough. I'm going to allow the uh, half to drill to try and drop off, but then it's going to be deleted. There we go. Uh, this one just needs to grab. Uh, we're going to supply pickaxes because that's going to uh, increase the regeneration of underground sources of ore. And we want to set this up to gather the, um, the iron ore directly. There we go. I'm just draw that across. Perfect. There we are. The iron ore is then also buffering in the silo. Now, to deliver the pickaxes, we're going to want to... Well, to be honest, we're just going to get rid of this one spot of ore right about there. Oh, let me uh, get rid of that. Let's go there. There we are. Can I... Oh, wait, I'm using the wrong thing. I need to remove resource. Remove building and remove resource are handily not the same thing. Otherwise, I would be making all sorts of mistakes all the time. Uh, thankfully... The game is protecting me from myself. There we go. And then we can just set this up to pull the pickaxes out. Nicely done. There we are. Now then, all we uh, need to do now is bring along some plate and some uh, reinforced planks. We'll go with two, two wagons for this one. I don't see a reason to use anything else. So one wagon there. Just go ahead and deliver those. And one wagon from here. Do the same. And we... Are sorted. Right, we should start seeing our very first production of pickaxes in just a moment. There we are. There we are. Amazing. Right. Now then, we could have this workshop uh, using steam as well to boost this production of cloth. Is there any reason to? I don't think so right now. So let's instead just connect the steam pipe up such that it brings over the Let's not go quite up that high. Let's come up by two. Just cross by one. We will remove that connector. And then we need to go across just like this. Oh, it would be easier if I had it moving around like that. There we are. That should... Oh, didn't connect. How peculiar. Let me try that again. Changing the, the plane that we're building on mid-build does sometimes... Get a little bit finicky. There we go. That should work. And there we are. Pickaxes should be being produced reasonably quickly. And also being supplied to the mine. Marvellous. Now, the thing with pickaxes is if we look at mining, and we go and find ourselves the... Oh, it may be under paths, actually. Yes, we need the pickaxe in a barn in order to use it to build a mine shaft. Now, if we go into the mining overlay, you should see that the mine does have access to the ore deposit directly around it, and it will use the pickaxes to regenerate these deposits when needed. But if we want to tap into all of the rest of it, we need to uh, to build some mine shafts, and that's going to require that we have pickaxes to uh, to deploy in that way. Underground resources are replenished 500% faster when mined, which is uh, quite nice. Now, for the time being, it's going to take us a little while to build up these pickaxes, unfortunately. Uh, it is taking us quite some time, 12 seconds. Mind you, we, we're getting some bonuses thanks to the steam, but ultimately this is going to take quite some time. We're probably going to want to start ramping up production in, in general across all of our towns. But that's the main part of that taken care of. We now have access to uh, some higher tier medicine and we are actually producing pickaxes which we can then use to renew the resources that we're mining. Now what I would like to do very much in fact is to deliver some of those pickaxes over to this mine. Now uh, to get that on the go maybe a little bit more tricky. There we are. Let's uh, get that all the way down. We may need to set up uh, a bridge somewhere around here, and I'm thinking that would probably be uh, a reasonable thing to do straight away. And in fact, if we had this sign turned the other way, then any bridge we would build would look very, very uh, 
very uh, intentional around here. So I think we're going to go for that. Let's go ahead and remove this. And having a, a bridge there for the delivery of pickaxes via wagon will be one step closer to delivering things via train. Now, we're not going to get to the train for, for the pickaxes, but I'm thinking that we are going to want trains for moving food around. It seems like a really obvious one there. Uh, let's pull this down a little bit and down there as well. There we go. We want this bridge to be quite, quite pretty. Let's uh, try and bring this up if we can. Let's uh, we'll take that around. There we go. And we should be able to build that up. There we are. Now, I'm going to want the ramps to continue upwards. Probably a couple more tiles, if I'm honest. Let's bring these up. There we go. And something around here. We're getting close to where we want to be, sure. This should be high enough now for quite quite a good uh, passage of future boats through this area. Because I'm thinking of setting up this, this little area as a proper dock for us later on. All right, let's bring this across. And both sides, please. Oops, there we go. And one more. Got to be able to see the face that you're connecting to, to in order to drag it. There we are. And with that, we should be good. Uh, I think we're going to need to bring it up to just one shy of the actual uh, platform. There we are. And then uh, we can build it down on the other side. Uh, how did we do that? We just brought it down. Well, actually, the other side, we're going to have to build this in slightly different way. So uh, I may as well stop using the other one as a reference. There we go. And then finally, we should be on the ground. Donk. There we are. Perfect. We're going to have to carve our way through here as well. There we go. So that'll be a nice little town. Uh, hopefully, we can, in fact, rotate that around. Yes, we can. Perfect. And now with that, we can just bring the roads over. There we go. Lovely. Absolutely wonderful. Now with this, we're going to separate this out and uh, just bring this up as a uh, just a one-tile-thick cobble road. I'll just remove these. There we go. There we are. Now our towns are properly connected. Every single town can be reached by a wagon, should we want them to be. We are also starting to stockpile uh, pickaxes, which is grand. So that means that this has now fully uh, fully stored the, the pickaxes down here. Now, how we want to make these pickaxes available? Hmm, that is a bit of a, a bit of a question, a bit of a quandary, really. Uh, ultimately, I guess we want to remove a section here as much as I am loath to do so. I'm still going to, since we've already kind of done it anyway. I guess it isn't so terrible. Let's go ahead and remove that out so that we can continue our setup uh, as we have done in other tiles. Let's uh, just drag that across. There we go. Marvellous. And that allows us to do that. Now with this in place, I can set up a little chute, set up a grabber. Um, actually, thinking about it, let's not do that. Let's instead have the barn completely fill with pickaxes. Let's set that up. We are, of course, going to require a bit of work at the back as well. Uh, let's grab these two and then probably run this all the way down to here. There we go. This is the way that we're going to uh, get all this to connect, to connect up. Let's uh, pop this one down there. We'll bring this up too, just so it has a little bit more clearance than it did previously. And it'll look quite nice, I think. There we are. Might need to angle this down a little bit better so I can properly connect these up. And with that, perfect. Now we can have this roll all the way down, like so. We will use a pusher to encourage it into the barn as a priority and of course then a grabber to pull the pickaxes themselves out there we go marvelous done done and done now the barn is going to take a while to fill up at the rate that we're we're building these pickaxes and that does suck a little bit i'm going to be honest so we may want to drop a couple 
extra workers in here. In fact, we're going to go all the way to five extra workers. It doesn't give us a whole heck of a lot more speed, but uh, it's it's enough for now, I feel. It's, uh, it's going to make things a bit easier for us. Now, with that, I think we are going to want a caravan, because this is a bit of a long trek. We're going to take any pickaxes. Actually, we want to take them out of the, the silo rather than the barn, so that the barn is available for future building. And we will deliver it straight up to the mine, like so. There we go. That is quite the track. Quite the track. It is quite uh, full of pickaxes, though. That's actually quite good. Uh, there we are. Let's make sure that all of these are, in fact, set to pickaxes. Just in case. Though, in before, much later on, I decide... To, oh, well, I don't need pickaxes over there. I'm going to repurpose this caravan for something else. And then I forgot that I explicitly told it only to carry pickaxes. That will suck, but uh, it is 100% something I'll do. We all know this. Right, from now on, I would actually instead like you to bring the pickaxes from the silo over here all the way to the silo here. This way we can stockpile some additional pickaxes for this mine. Because this mine is going to be doing an awful lot of work in just a moment. Let's uh, also build this up a little bit. Oh no, I have made a very big silly there. Hmm. We have to move you across and uh, allow that to be filled up. Unfortunately, I had not taken into consideration that this uh, land was uh, elevated there, so the wagon would have struggled to get this over here. There we go. And if you don't put a road on that uh, scaffold in there, then the wagon would never be able to deliver it. Either. So there we are, all sorted now. There we, are. Uh, we are going to want this one to be pickaxes again. And that's already set up. Perfect. Right, our caravan should be able to make the route now. Let's uh, make sure. We want to bring pickaxes over to the silo. There we go. Have you got any on you? Yes, you yeah, have, actually. Well done. And with that, we can set this up to accept uh, supply pickaxes. There we go. Perfect. So now we are building a supply of pickaxes that will be reserved for the, the use of building mine shafts. And additionally, we're building up uh, a little supply of pickaxes in the uh, various mines themselves as well. Now, with that done, I could possibly, conceivably, use this to bring along... Uh, let me pull this down if I can. There we are. Uh, it seems that that is more or less in the right spot. There we go. Perfect. We can bring stone over to the stone mason this way. And that will uh, significantly uh, simplify the logistics over here. Now, how do I want to do this? Do I want to run it all the way into the silo? I guess I could. Alternatively, I could have the silo moved. And I think we're going to do that instead. Let's uh, move that silo just over here. There we are. And we will grab one of these chutes. There we go. Perfect. Right, so with that, we are going to want to set up a... Let's pause it there, just to make sure that this is grabbing stone. Now, of course, stone isn't natively available to this mine. If we have a look at it, its catchment area does not get anywhere near to stone. But that is where mine shafts come into play. Now, we can build 35 of these. That may be enough. Let's go ahead into the mining overlay. We are going to want to build this out to... Well, if we came all the way down here, then we could just drive straight down like that. And there we go. We now have access to all of the highlighted stone there. And that is pretty awesome. There we are. As you can see, as we build these out, we gain a little bit more access. You basically get the eight tiles around the tile of the mine shaft as well. Uh, we could build in the other direction just to make sure that we've also got access to the coal. That's probably worth our time. Just to future-proof this mine a little bit. There we go. It's not it's not a lot, but it's probably enough. Especially with the uh, pickaxes being delivered. Now, of course, it's going to take us a little time to get all of those uh, in there, but they will eventually be there. And uh, we should see that this mine will start gathering stone as soon as I tell it to. There we go. It is gathering stone from down here. In fact, it's gathering the stone from the surface deposits. I wasn't actually sure that I could by using the mineshaft, but it does seem 
to be that it uh, that it can. That's actually pretty cool. Now we have just used up all of the pickaxes, so it's going to take us a long while to generate some more. So that's a, that's a little bit of a problem for us, but uh, overall. I think that's reasonably good. Now I am getting to the point where I feel that we need some dedicated farms, some large scale farming going on that will then be delivered to the various other areas and po perhaps delivered by train. Yes, I am probably doing this just to validate the use of trains, but damn it, it's gonna be cool. And that's good enough for us. Uh, it's certainly good enough for me at the very least, but first we're gonna need to clear out some I think so let's go ahead and uh, page up this spot we are going to just straight up remove a huge chunk of minerals there and that uh, is a bit of a problem but oh well. there we go now we've got this massive area to use for our farms now that we've got the mines it's a lot less uh, a lot less of a problem and honestly other than wood which you can feel wooden wooden like grains and other other crop types you can reasonably just stri uh, like harvest those and clear cut an area fairly quickly if you're dedicated to it used by using one or two barns and a whole lot of meeples but when it comes to rock they've got enormous deposits enormous deposits you would need like as standard one barn and a little tiny bit more just for that one tile to be emptied into so when it when it comes to that sort of thing i'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed about just stripping things away so we want to set up something to validate the use of trains now uh, i am thinking yeah let's let's shall we shall we go ahead and try and make some sandwiches i think we should yes we we really should let's let's go ahead and make plenty of delicious delicious sandwiches now we are going to work backwards and we are going to try to get to the point where we are producing sandwiches as quickly as the recipe can make them so where are we going to find sandwiches in here to make a sandwich we're going to need bread we're going to need butter we're going to need chicken it will produce 30 gold coins and will be sold at gourmet food locations uh the other alternative because uh i mean gourmet food isn't too bad but we could also go for veggie soup the beautiful thing about veggie soup is it can be made all in a single farm. Sandwiches require at least three farms. Well, two animal pastures and one for grains, which can then be split between the two animal pastures for, for animal feed and also uh, bread. But honestly, you're probably, you're probably going to have two farms for grains. Whereas, you could conceivably have a single farm producing everything needed for veggie stew. I think we're probably going to go with the veggie stew to begin with. Uh, let's go for, go for that one. It's also sold in the gourmet food shop. Now, we need uh, six. Um, basically, need all of the materials every six seconds for this. That shouldn't be too hard. The fuel will come back to. That'll be the, the one that we uh, dial back in on. I'm going to need some more population, though, aren't I? Yes, yes, I am. Well, let's go ahead. Oh, that's an expensive house upgrade. Uh, let's get a couple more of our houses up to level three. You know what? Everyone gets an attic conversion in Ember Point. There we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and place down a farm. Now, with one farm, we can have a look at what we will be producing. To make, uh, I believe it was carrots, tomatoes, and potatoes. Okay, so we would be able to produce enough from a single farm theoretically now it would be better if i had three separate farms each producing just a single type of uh, type of output but that would be producing it, it let's let's assume that we did have three farms so they, they were really only only working on one type of output so there was no additional slowdown because they had multiple outputs we would be able to produce two veggie stews in well in six seconds so realistically we would want two kitchens to be able to run that and that's off the the output of a single or rather three farms i think we can go with this sure uh, let's uh, let's try this let's uh, move these farms back we're gonna want another one let's grab that um sure i think we will in fact go with three dedicated farms like so each one will produce um, all three three items and then deliver them probably into a barn 
which will then deliver it to two kitchens. Let's grab a second kitchen. Pop that down there. There we go. And then we're ultimately going to want a barn that lives right there, right between them. We could space these out a little bit more if I particularly want to. And maybe I do. Maybe I do. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we, we'll see about that one. But the main thing is we would want all three of these to deliver all of their produce to this one barn. Now, how are we going to set up the uh, the farm towels? Well, I think we should try and get all of the farm towels we can in front and behind. Because we're going to want to uh, draw these out reasonably fast. Now, I am going ahead and painting these down, even though I know secretly in my heart of hearts I'm going to be getting rid of some of them. But that's just the way it's going to be. We're going to be getting rid of these three so that I can have water pop up here and also be supported on little platforms. Uh, we'll probably have it risen up a little bit so that we uh, are delivering water there. Now, as for fertilizer, that one's a good question. Are we going to deliver fertilizer? Is this full of fertilizer? No, it really is not. We could have a farm dedicated to it. I could have a wagon dedicated to bringing fertilizer up, maybe. Honestly, these farms here are not making use of uh, all the fertilizer that we're delivering, so we could potentially have this branch off and uh, deliver its way down there. If we were to do that, I think we would have to accept that this wagon would need to be upgraded to a caravan, but that's something we'll do in a little bit. I'm instead going to place this down. I'm going to go ahead and bring this fertilizer all the way along. So let's build that out there. Now this has a, a fair old way to travel, so let's uh, pop down a couple of these here and there. Uh, let's, you, you know I want to. I can't help it, okay? I need to evenly space out the the support beams. Uh, the, what? It wouldn't be an Avag Let's Play if I if I was, wasn't was doing this. You know it. I know it. Let's just not pretend. Go okay, we'll bring this up a little bit more. Actually... I fancy we are going to have to get rid of some of these trees. Yeah, we're going to have to get rid of some of these trees, but we won't get rid of all of them. We'll just get rid of the ones that are directly in the path. There we go. And now we're going to have to bring this out a little bit more. Let me make sure that I've counted that correctly. And now we are on the right level. So at this point, I just want to bring these down here. Now, I am going to go ahead and once again remove these so that we've got some supports that the, then can then deliver them directly into the farms itself there we go this should be oh well, that's quite a long way to go i'll be honest but it should be fun all the same there we go. Let's see how we're going down as well and the moment we do this our wagon which is currently just uh popping back and forth will suddenly be able to completely empty the uh, the contents. Now, with that done, I am thinking that perhaps we are also going to want to remove these paths so that I can have shoots running down. I believe that all of these vegetables will be able to make their path. I should be able to find out by going in here and saying, I would like potatoes. Now, potatoes can roll. So that shouldn't be telling me that it can't do it. This one, so that's potatoes. This one will be tomatoes. Again, I'm fairly certain they can roll. And finally, carrots. Now, carrots can roll, depending on which way you roll them down. Is that going to complain? No, it didn't. Well, that's quite wonderful. I'm very happy with that, actually. Very happy indeed. Right, and we want tomatoes. Make sure I haven't selected apples. You know it's, it's going to happen. It probably already has happened a few times, in fact. Right, so with that, we can go ahead and uh, take these up properly. Let me just uh, explicitly angle this around. There we go. And finally, there we go. Right, now, we want the barn to very specifically accept tomatoes. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't have the main filter. It should be tomatoes there and carrots and potatoes. Only we're going to swap these around because that's the order I've got the farms in. And it matters to me. I know it shouldn't. Don't think that I'm saying it, it, it should. I'm just saying that it does. 
Uh, know your weaknesses, everyone. All right, let's pop this down there. We'll also pop underground. There we are. Now, where's the nearest supply of water that we could tap into? We could have the water be piped down from over there. I'm okay with this idea because ultimately, with this done, we will likely be moving away from having the uh, water supplied over there. Oh, that is not quite where I wanted it to go. Let me try and connect that back up again. There we are. And then this one can just come straight across. Perfect. In, in, and in. There we are. Water is being supplied to all of the farms. Marvellous. Well, I would like you to supply both water and fertilizer, please. And that should be true of all of them. There we go. Gotta double check that I set that up correctly because now I don't have tomatoes in here, which is frustrating. Uh, gotta be careful about where you're clicking. And finally, down here with the carrots as well. One well, fertilizer and water, please. There we go. Now all those fields should be getting taken care of. Right, finally then, we are going to want to bring all of this down. Now, currently this is going to prioritize delivery of fertilizer to these farms, which might not be the, the way we want to do it, but uh, it is what we're going to do for now. There we go. So this won't allow any further fertilizer in until it's completely backed up. And I would like you to just drop off this fertilizer and then we're going to get you upgraded to a wagon. Yeah. Uh, sorry, to a caravan. Yeah, let's get the caravan down. And I would like this very much if you could bring over fertilizer and make sure that this silo is forever stockpiled full of fertilizer there we go and you you and finally you there we go perfect all right there we are that should be taken care of right now with all of that done did i just tell the the wagon i did oh that's just annoying sometimes it's very easy to click on the wrong thing there we are all right now we want to make sure that i planted the farms before i do anything else so potato in this farm and down here, they should be able to grow underneath the piping. Next up, we want to set up the tomatoes. Once again, this should be able to grow underneath the piping. I'm fairly certain that it won't, won't uh, struggle with that. And finally, carrots. We will find out, though. I'm, I'm fairly certain you only need one tile of clearance for crops to grow underneath piping or, or um, shoots or anything like that. All right, let's bring this across. There we go. And over here as well. And finally, over here, before we bring it all the way in and connect each one of these up to the farms themselves. There we are. And here. Now, hopefully, these tiles are going to uh, get some water in a moment. There we are. Good, good, good. That worried me for a moment there. Have that one peel off and that one peel off. You should see everything get fertilized as well. Let's have a look at that fertilizer. Yes, there we go. So now that we've got all that going, we can set up our kitchens. I would very much like it if we could set up some veggie stew right there. There we go. Now what we could do is have the veggie stew sent back into this barn to be uh, brought out elsewhere. That might not be a bad idea all things considered. Additionally, I could have fertilizer put into this barn to be used as fuel. If I found that uh, the fertilizer was overall being massively stockpiled, well beyond our needs, then I could take care of that. But I don't think we're producing that much fertilizer. Uh, we might be. But it's all coming from a single pasture. So I'm inclined to think not. Probably not. Probably not. We're probably actually going to um, run afoul of that in the very near future, actually. Uh, instead, we're going to move these down. Uh, this barn is never actually going to need to be serviced, but I demand that it look pretty. So let's pop a little little central flower display right there. It'll look lovely. Now, what we are going to want from the barn, we're going to pause it for this, is all three ingredients brought down. So my pause is because the moment I did that, it was going to 
try and build up grabbers. We want potatoes, tomatoes, and carrots. There we are. All of those delivered. Yep, that'll be perfect. And then exactly the same thing over here. Now, when you're not dragging the the product, it won't automatically put a grabber. So, as you can see, when I placed a single tile there, it didn't care that uh, that I just placed a conveyor. It wasn't going to place a grabber. It needs to see that you're pulling the direction of the the item out and away from the uh, structure for it to matter. But we do have a decent amount of produce in there, so that uh, shouldn't take over long to get all of that delivered. Now, one thing I could do is have the fuel delivered in the front or across the back. I'm not entirely certain. We do want to bring that fuel across, though. Uh, maybe we could even tap in down here. Is there some coal nearby? Let's have a look on the mining layer. Because there may well have been some coal nearby that we uh, dug up. No, it was all it was all iron, unfortunately. There's a tiny bit of coal down there. There's a whopping great deal of coal over here, though, that we could hook up later on when we've got access to the uh, um, fire crystals, and we can just make magma on the spot. But for now, we're going to need some more traditional fuel sources, and maybe, maybe honestly, just having a supply of coal delivered is not a bad idea. Now, the reason for that is because we're going to be setting up a train station. The train station is going to need both water and it's going to need fuel. We could run it off logs for now, though. And maybe that is the easier one to, to go for. So let's go ahead and set up a little forest then. Just so that we've got a nice production of logs. Yeah, I'm going to just go straight for wood there. Now, we are going to want to deliver this fuel into both of these kitchens in as comfortable way as we can. And to that end, I'm gonna say we're gonna use a uh, a silo for this. Uh, let's go ahead and build this out in line with the silo. There we go. That way we can just take this straight out. There. there we go. And there's never gonna be anything but logs coming out of this, so we won't worry about the there we go. That should be enough. I doubt we're going to be using the fuel that aggressively, so we should be okay. Uh, we are going to build this up to level two. There we are. Something like that should do. And then cap it off at level three. And then build out a little uh, gantry of scaffolding for us to set up a chute as well. Perfect. Now with this in place, we can happily start delivering the fuel. Now I know I just said we don't need the grabber over there, but we do need a grabber at the top. Even though it can realistically only pull one type of thing out, uh, we did want the, the grabber at the top there. But there we go. We are now producing veggie stew pretty much as fast as we can. With uh, all three of these farms running, we should see... Uh, the the amount uh, we'll see one potato, one carrot, and one tomato produced every three seconds, and we will be using two tomatoes, two potatoes, and two carrots every six seconds. So effectively, one every three seconds. So that will give us the maximum output that we could possibly have. I think that is going to be marvelous. This is going to be grand for us, truly, truly grand. Now we are going to need a train stop. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. Now this is where we go into completely unknown territory. The train station, we can have this right about here. It can be uh, supplied by... Ooh, does it need... Oh, does the train go in one side, not the other, perhaps? Or is it more like a... Uh, like a, a silo where the train has to rock up at the output side to, be, uh, to have things delivered to it? I think it's probably more like that. So uh, we'll certainly operate uh, under that assumption for now. There we go. And we are also going to want this to be delivered over here. Oops. There we are. And there we are. We are getting all of our veggie stews delivered to the train station. Now, 
This, I suspect, will only allow us to store one type of thing in this train station. And that is not necessarily what we want to do. We may want to do other things. Certainly, we've got uh, plenty of products. Like Right now, we're, we're more than likely only producing as much as we're using, but uh, that does still leave some significant downtime uh, in both of these kitchens, I should imagine. Also, as a general rule, I kind of feel it's better if you supply things to a silo and then have that silo supply that item on because then you build a, a little bit of an extra buffer. And I think that's uh, generally uh, a much better, better system in my humble, humblest of humble opinions, uh, which is not very humble at all. Uh, let's uh, actually bring that along underneath just because I think it'll look a little bit better. There we go. And then hopefully we can just get that to slide on in there. There we are. That is perfect. That looks quite nice, I think. Quite industrial in a way, but uh, very nice, I think. Uh, I don't think you can you can claim it's not. And I really, really do love those pipes there. But we're going to have to bring over some steam to help our kitchens. Uh, but right now, our train station is starting to fill up. So it is time for us to have a look at what else we can do. Now, if you have a look at the train station, we've got the steam engine. Do we have a uh, loading station for the uh, for the trains? That may, in fact, be a logistics block. A rail loader, a fuel loader. Here we go. Now, a fuel loader, I suspect, is purely water and wood, I think. We're going to have to play around with that a little bit. But I think we've run out, actually run out of time. And so I'm going to be a massive scallywag. And I'm just going to say that, yeah, we've started on the journey towards trains. We've got our first train station set up, and in the next episode, we are going to start delivering. We've already got the gourmet food, uh, the food uh, stall in Old Town. We are going to want a train that will not just deliver to Old Town, but to every other town as well, before looping back to collect more veggie steam. And I think uh, that will be a pretty solid plan. It'll also give us plenty of time to experiment with how trains work. I really do hope you've enjoyed this episode, though. Do leave me feedback down below about how much of a scallywag I am for using such a cliffhanger there. But uh, until next time, and as always, do take care of yourselves. <laughs>